Welcome to another episode of uh, Golan Cafe and today we are going to continue with the Go concurrency tutorial. Um, in one of the previous episodes we have seen the usage of Go routines and how we synchronize Go routines using uh, wake groups. Um, let's just go through the example that we've seen last time. I'll just link uh, um, the previous video in the description as well uh, but uh, let's just go through the example and uh, let's see let's see uh, what uh, the example is about so we have the slow version as you can see we have a list of foods and we have a very slow operation in this case which is cook and it takes two seconds for each uh, for each of those so we have four of them and in theory it should take uh, it should take uh, eight eight seconds a little over eight seconds to process all of them so you have to imagine as this being a very slow a series of very slow operations that you want to uh, you want to make uh, concurrent and you want to make faster using go and go routines and as you can see starting now and taking a little bit uh, over two seconds for each one of those and in total it takes a little over eight seconds so last time we see now how we use go routines so that the our our uh, program uh, becomes uh, concurrent and uh, we're able to process much more quickly um, our our uh, operations uh, in a much quicker way and we've seen also how to synchronize different go routines using wake groups which is a way uh, to synchronize indeed uh, different go routines um, let's just see how this plays out and as expected is much quicker because we are using uh, concurrency and uh, we are distributing load to different go routines and as i mentioned last time uh, wake groups is just one of the ways that you can uh, synchronize go routines so in this example we're still gonna use go routines which is the main construct in go for using concurrency but we're using another concept uh, to synchronize different go routines so the concept we are going to use today is uh, it's called channels and the channels uh, it's a way in go um, to communicate uh, between different go routines so wake groups uh, is uh, is uh, specifically a way to coordinate go routines and synchronize go routines channels is uh, is a bit more and it's used for also and specifically also uh, passing information across different go routines we're gonna see in an example in the next video how we actually pass information and data across different go routines but it can also be used uh, as a synchronization method, and we're gonna and we're gonna see today how that uh, how that works. So let's uh, remove uh, the wake group code, and uh, let's create our channel. So in this case, we're gonna use a channel, um, and the channel you have to think is a channel as uh, as uh, as kind of an array of uh, of data, it's like as a slice of data. Um, and this and this can be used by many go routines and uh, it's kind of a pipe where you can send information uh, to an end and you can receive information to another end and you have to think of those two ends as being two different go routines so this allows different go routines uh, to communicate between each other obviously channels have a type as uh, you know any other variables uh, in, in go as well uh, so we're gonna define a channel with a, within a specific type. For for this instance, we are just gonna pass uh, a, a basic boolean value because it's just a way to synchronize, and we're not actually reading the value, but we're just uh, signaling uh, the end of the operation. So let's just define the channel. You call it results, and uh, we define using the word make, and the keyword. For the channel the type for the channel is chan and then we define the type so in this case it's boolean we could use uh integer uh you can you can use any any type you you wish uh and this is obviously something that uh, depends on the your use case so in this case we're gonna just use boolean so we define the channel 
and uh, you have to bear in mind that uh, with the Chan you have a few operations you can do. The most important operations are, uh, as as you as you as you remember, I've uh, told you before. You can uh, send data into this pipe. You have to think it as a pipe. You send data into the pipe, and you can receive the data from the pipe. So the first thing is uh, send data, and you can send data by using the channel channel name, and then you use the arrow like this and then you send the value in this case send true you can send any value uh, as long as it's the same value you define on your channel and then you can receive data so this is the sending the data and then you can receive data you can use the other as well just before the name and in this case uh, you will receive the value you can either use the value that you receive or you can just discard the value and this is a correct syntax as well so there are two different operations. So this is uh, called uh, unbuffered channel because the size is fixed and uh, the default size is one. So you can send at most uh, one value at a time. So you cannot send more than one value. And this means that uh, if the channel is full, uh, while you send new data, it will block. So until uh, on the other side of the pipe, you retrieve the information you have. If the channel is empty, when you try to receive, when you try to uh, receive the information, if the channel is empty, this will block as well, because it's a way to synchronize uh, these two coroutines basically. So let's see an example so we can uh, we can uh, understand it a little bit better. So the first thing that we do is uh, we define the channel. Then uh, we spawn the coroutines, and at the end of each coroutine, uh, we send the data to the channel. So we know that at this stage, uh, the channel will have, uh, we receive uh, four values, and since this is a fixed size uh, for each coroutine, this will block. So it's uh, after the first coroutine as, as executed, this we block until we don't uh, get the value out of the channel. And how do we get the value out of the channel? Well, in this case, we just go through how many operations we expect to see from the channel. And then we just read the value out. So we just pull the value out of the channel. So we just go through the channel four times and we pull the value out of the channel. And then this should be sufficient for us to synchronize uh, the main routine, which is running this for loop and picking up the values uh, from the channel and the different four routines that we are uh, uh, creating to uh, process the very slow cook function here. So let's just uh, run the example and see. As you can see, it's working as expected. So let's see um, and try to understand a little bit better why uh, this is the case and the edge cases. So for example, uh, what happens if I remove this piece of logic here? So if I remove this piece of logic here, in theory, this should uh, finish very quickly uh, because uh, we don't uh, wait on all those coroutines uh, to finish. So we should have the same issue we had a while back in the previous episodes where we were just instantiating the coroutines, but we didn't have any way or knowledge about the status of those coroutines. So this uh, should just uh, quit and finish very quickly, as you can see. Then there is another example I wanted to show you. So the channel in this case, let's say that you're line 12 and you just created the channel. And uh, in this case, you try to read from the channel. So this is one of the quick the quick the quick quirks you have to learn about the channel is that when the channel is empty and you try to read from the channel, then uh, this op this operation will block indefinitely. This is because you don't have any value in the channel yet, so you are trying to read from the same go routine, uh, and you need to be careful about that because this is used. Uh, when there are different goroutines, the channel is used to synchronize different goroutines. So if in the same goroutines you create the empty channel and then you try to read from the empty channel, then we block indefinitely because uh, this is a blocking operation. The read, the receive uh, of the channel is a blocking operation. It's trying to 
get a value from the channel and it, it, win, it, won't, it won't go ahead until you have uh, until it gets a value from the channel so let's see how this behaves as you can see uh, it's in that lock state and that's because uh, you're trying to read from uh, from uh, an empty channel and the same goes for when you're trying to write to the channel so let's say that you you just started uh, you have an empty channel and then you send a value in and as we said this is unbuffered channel so it doesn't have a, a size that you define so you can define a you can define a buffered channel by specifying a, a size when you create it for example you can say 10 but in this example this is like if it is one so this is a size one once you send the value if you try to send the value again you try to send true and false and then you try to send false again this should uh, should that lock as well because because what happens is that you're trying to send the value and then and the second time you're trying to send the value again but the channel is full so this will deadlock until uh, another routine tries to read from the channel and tries to remove the value from the channel and that's exactly the same the same um, the same thing but what happens uh, so this changes because uh, this happens because the channel size is one and what happens if the channel size is three for example well in this example uh, what happens is that um, what happens is that uh, the, the, the first item gets in, the channel is not full yet, so you can send another item in, and then you can send another item in. In this case, the channel is full. Then you go through all of your coroutines, all of the fools, and then the program just uh, should just exit. As you see. So this is more or less how the synchronization using channel work. Um, let's just put back uh, the the proper uh, the proper value. So we just go through four instances, and uh, we're trying to read four times. So this basically makes sure that uh, we have sent four value in the channel. This is what this code is doing is just saying. I expect at least four values in the channel and until uh, I don't get four values in the channel this will block so the line 19 will block and that's and that's how it gets synchronized as you can see cool thanks for watching on the next episode we're gonna see how we use um, we're gonna see how we use uh, better, how we use buffer channels and how we actually pass data across different go routines because now we're not actually using the data, we are just discarding the value. But in the next episode, we're gonna see how we actually use the data and uh, more quicks about and more interesting things about channels. Thanks for watching.